Well, what's up, friends? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Taco Tuesday, but you know what? Today, we're going to make it Troll Tuesday. Um, we had Philly 500 on. We did a live stream with him doing the Walk of Shame. Let me say, Philly 500 is a true friend. True friend and a true fan um, for him to come on here like he did and, and literally say that I am his daddy and hold up to the bet I have mad respect for that guy it was a rough week if you were in the NFC East unless you were a Dallas Cowboy and um, I don't want Philly 500 to be the only one who's miserable today I just want to give you guys a taste of what it was like to be in some of the other cities with other teams and try and get you to count your blessings. We have so many fans out there that are always talking about Dak Prescott, he ain't that good, he's ass, he's not a game changer, blah, 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 blah. The Joneses family, they we need to get a real GM, he sucks, we ain't got nobody, we don't really care about winning. Well, you know what? Let's go to the tape here. Let's talk to, uh, let, let's listen to my man Bad Dog for a little bit and just see how he's feeling right now with Jason Garrett and crew. Garrett with the Giants fan, because I'm sure all Giants fans are feeling the same way that I'm feeling today and have felt for the last five years. Um, it's Eli Manning Day, the greatest quarterback in the history of this team. When they retire his number, the Giants have a 14 to seven lead with about seven minutes ago against Probably outside of us, the worst team in football, and they can't hold it. Um, this team has broken me as a fan. You hear me, John Mara? You hear me, New York Giants organization? As a guy who has loved this team since 1984, spit blue for 38 years, spends Damn. my time week in and week out watching this catastrophe and clown show that you put on the field every week, you've broken me. This broke me today. Losing to a pathetic organization like the Falcons in front of your home fans when you retire number 10's number. The inability to freaking score points inside the 20. The inability to get a stop on defense when your team finally goes down and scores a touchdown. Your quarterback runs over a defensive end to get a two-point conversion and then the defense goes right down and lays an egg. Terrible penalties, terrible clock management by a terrible head coach. That's right, I'm saying it. Joe Judge... All talk, no substance. That is our head coach. Wow. You can sit there and you can talk as much as you want, but eventually you need to see results in the field. The New York Giants see no results except for negative results week in and week out. It is a pathetic joke what this organization... You are the worst team in football. You are the most embarrassing franchise in football, which was once an incredibly proud organization is absolutely disgraceful. I'm embarrassed to wear these colors. Embarrassed. I don't even have the energy to really cover it anymore. I will, but you can see in the live streams, man, there's no emotion because this team takes it out of me because week in and week out, it is the same damn movie script. We've seen this film before. This team can't put anybody away. This team is not aggressive. It's fourth down and three. Let's punt the ball. The Falcons have a freaking, you know, they have two seconds on the play clock. Let's call a timeout on defense on third down and nine. Let's call a timeout on defense when they're on the goal line. And do the Giants make a stop? No. Every time the Giants call a timeout on defense, the offense goes right out and converts. Every time. Odori Jackson can't catch an interception in the end zone that would have put it away. Shades of Landon Collins in 2015 against the New England Patriots, in which we lost on the last second field goal. Evan Ingham does what he does best, doing nothing but hurting this team. The Giants don't execute. Wow. Joe Judge, execution, execution, execution. The only thing that the Giants <laughs> execute week in and week out is themselves. They shoot themselves in the foot every single week. Whether it's bad penalties, drop catches, bad fumbles, they're injured on a consistent basis. Oh Shepard out. You know, uh, Darius Slayton out. Everybody's always hurt. Oh Nobody makes God. a play when they need to make it. The Giants find ways to lose. It's like they try to lose. Like, you would think to yourself, a professional football team can't be this bad. And week in and week out, you'd sit there and think, oh, my God, the Giants can't get any worse. And just when you think that, they find a way to get worse. 
This team may not win a game the rest wow. of the season. They may not. They may go 0-17. They may be the first team in the history of football to lose 17 games in a season. They have that capability because their offer, their schedule coming up is not easy. This was a very winnable game against a team that you should be able to beat at home, and you can't do it. You score 14 freaking points against a team with a terrible defense. Wow. It's embarrassing, man. Wow. It's completely and utterly, it's embarrassing. It is. The Giants are the laughing stock of football, and they should be. You know, John Mara got booed heartily at halftime today, and he deserved every one of them boos. Wow. Every one. These fans that pay all that money week in and week out, they travel, they hotel there, they tailgate, you know, they pay a million bucks for parking, they pay tons for tickets. I say it every week. It costs a fortune to bring your family to a game, and what are you, what are you paying for? You're paying wow. for one of the lousiest products on the market. Billy. And that's why we're the superior team of the division. That's why we're the superior team of the division. I just said this before halftime. Oh my god. Oh my god. Listen to him. Oh Philly. Oh, oh, oh here it comes. Oh poor Philly. Philly. Little little Philly. Oh here he goes. Oh. Little Philly. What a big throw. Stupid throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you recording? Oh, 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 God. Hey, did the screen freeze? What the hell was that? <laughs> That's a horrible throw. Oh, did the screen oh, freeze? Oh, my God. Ah, stupid. Oh, oh, Damn, like really? three people. <laughs> okay. And let's end up with the Washington no names with my man Rio, who was actually supposed to be here, but his in-laws came in uh, to save him on Sunday. But he said he will be here this week. And let's check with Rio and see what he has to say. In the tone of this pod, we lost yesterday. Today is Monday, September 27th, and our Washington football team, Laid an egg in Buffalo yesterday. I mean, I never expected a victory versus Buffalo, but to say that we would go up there and lose 43-21 to 21, and that score doesn't fully justify how terrible we looked yesterday is an understatement. But Wait yeah, for we it. We lost by 22 points in a game where they probably should have scored 60, and the 14 points we put up in the first half came in a kind of fluky, wild-type, slippery slope of events where we got the luckiest long offsides, onsides kick that I've ever seen. But we're going to get to all of that. But the main theme of today's show, the slump busters are back. Far too long here. Whatever. We've been the medicine, the antidote, and the elixir for struggling opposing teams. If you need a fixer-upper, if you need a team to come absolve you of all the issues you've been having, come on down to Washington because for my entire life as a fan here, we've been slump busters. Whenever there is that stipulation that lies, this team has not been able to do this since. This quarterback has not been able to do this since. We've always fixed that issue for whatever team we were going to play. Josh Allen, 75, 79 quarterback rating. He comes in and gives us a 130. He almost passed his first two weeks combined in quarterback rating yesterday. Put 370 on us, five touchdowns. But that is expected of an MVP candidate player. That's the type of quarterback we've never seen here. Don't get me wrong. Taylor Heineke did not have a bad game yesterday. You know what? No, Taylor Heineke did have a bad game yesterday. No, I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be that guy today. You know, he showed fight. He showed that gritty gamer mentality that we've always seen. But now we're going to call We're going to keep it a buck. He played like shit yesterday, but he was not even <laughs> close to the reason we lost the game yesterday. But he put wow. way too many balls up for grabs. He threw two picks. He honestly should have had five because 
There were a lot of interceptable passes yesterday. But I'm not going to do Heineke like that because he's not even near the top of the list of why we lost yesterday. Wow. Going into this game, Coach Rivera called this a measuring stick game. And boy, was it. Mm. Boy. We do not belong on the same field as a true, legitimate Super Bowl contender. And it showed. It showed tremendously from the second the game kicked off. We don't belong on the field with this team. I drank the Kool-Aid going into the offseason. So I'm going to take accountability for it. And that's going to be the word that describes this whole recap pod of yesterday's game. Accountability. I hold myself accountable. I drank the Kool-Aid and told you on this show. All offseason, this team has taken a step and turned a corner and that this defense was going to be phenomenal and that they were going to prove that they are the true elite defense that we are on paper. So I'm going to hold myself accountable for that. So if I'm able to hold myself accountable as a fan who has no fucking influence or impact on the result of a game, then don't call me a hater or a detractor (laughs) When I call out the coaches or players on this team for not performing. Chase Young. Here we go. You are the face of this franchise. You are tagged a generational talent. And generational talent, whether they're having a good or bad game, they will leave their mark on the game. And you will see them at least once a game. You are not being... You are not playing to your potential right now, sir. I don't care about the numbers. You can see there's only a zero sacks through three games. While that is a head scratcher, it's more so the body language and what the eye test tells you. you. Don't say, oh, he's being chipped and blocked every play. This man is not beating one-on-one protection right now. He's still going in with no pass rush plan, and he's still trying to replicate what he did at DeMatha in Ohio State, which is I'm going to out-athlete every tackle in front of me, and that is not going to wow. cut it or work in this league. You need to add something to your arsenal because there is no reason why Chase Young looks like Ryan Kerrigan and only falls into sacks rather than goes and gets them. Dang. Him and Montez Sweat both need to be held accountable. Even more so, our coordinator... Joe Greg Manusky Del Rio. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this defense right now, but they're a bottom two unit in the league right now. Just call a spade a spade. We are not hating. Do I think Chase Young is a bust? No. Do I think Jack Del Rio should be fired? Hell no. Jack Del Rio is a defensive mastermind, but right now the smartest guy in the room shit it's not working. It's not working at all. Wow. I don't understand what the fuck this defense is doing right now. Like, I feel like a good college offense would give us at least 28 right now. Wow. So, Cowboy fans, those of you that are mining, whining, moaning, and bitching and everything else, take a note around what's going on around you. Um... Enjoy today. Today was great. I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Shout out to Rio. Okay. Rambling Rio. Check out his channel and stuff. He'll be here next Sunday. Great guy. Fed up with his team who he had been drinking the Kool-Aid of. Bad dog. Another cool dude. Great diehard fan who has been dying with the New York Giants that over the course of the last five years have not been over 500 once. And of course, my man, Philly 500, definitely sub up all of them and be thankful for the victory that we had. Now, I'm going to try and do this. We're going to call it Trolling Tuesday. And sometimes I may have to troll myself when the Dallas Cowboys look like ass because that is truly being a real fan not just drinking the kool-aid and thinking that everything is great 
but actually telling it like it is. And I salute all three of these guys for telling it like it is. Don't just be that blind homer that says that everything is hunky-dory. When the shit stinks, you got to say, where the hell is the Lysol? With that being said, I am going to be getting up out of here. I need to go ahead and get my closing video up here. Um, we've enjoyed today, but tomorrow we got to get back to work because we've got another big game on Sunday. It's a short week, and you can't live on what you did yesterday. You got to live on what you're doing today and tomorrow. And as always, you know how, it, how I roll. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I'll see you later. The, lights, the party's over. <laughs> they say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over. And tomorrow and next year starts the same old thing again. Yeah.